Hello guys, this is Emma from Mind Magics, and I welcome you all to this special session in which our trainer will explain everything you need to know about the Okta. In this video, let us look at the topics we will cover. We shall start with the overview of SAML, and continue with concepts of SAML flow, and parameters or components of SAML. Please check the caption to jump between the topics. If you are new to the Mind Magics channel, Please subscribe and press the bell icon to get quick updates about the new tech tutorials, free webinars, and career enhancing shots from working professionals. Like and share the video with your friends and IT career aspirants. Without any further delay, let's start the video. So basically, you know, uh, SAML is one of the single sign-on protocol and you know, there are different standard single sign-on protocols what we have in identity and access management domain. So basically what happens is that uh, uh, we have mentioned that, you know, we have understood what single sign on is. So single sign on is that you, you know, just log in once to your uh, browser or, you know, using Okta or any other uh, access management tool. And then if your application is integrated with that product, you will be able to access all the other applications without having to enter your credentials again and again. So there are some standard protocols which actually, you know, uh, helps us to achieve this uh, process or mechanism. And one of them is SAML. Uh, other we have is OIDC. And then Okta comes up with its own, you know, protocol, which is secure web authentication. It's not a standard uh, uh, single sign-on protocol, but it's like a workaround for, you know, uh, the SSO protocol where the federation is not possible. And then, you know, you have got some API templates protocols, which is your WS fed. So we'll see, you know, what SAML is uh, before we move on to that. So, you know, as I mentioned that, uh, like you'll have your system, then you'll have Okta application, which is on cloud. And then you'll be, you know, getting into the Okta application using HTTPS, you know, you'll, you'll go to your browser, you'll hit the HTTPS link of Okta. And then within Okta, you'll see that, you know, there are many applications integrated. So these applications are actually going to be integrated either through SAML, OIDC or secure web authentication. And then you as an end user can actually, you know, go ahead and directly uh, open, I mean, open an application if you have, uh, created a session with Okta, then you'll be able to get into these applications without having to enter your credentials again and again. So moving on to the SAML now, uh, there are some basic, you know, terminologies or terms what we have in SAML and, you know, it's very necessary for us to understand each and every terminology because that's how like, you know, once you'll understand SAML, that's how you'll be communicating in these terms. So, you know, uh, we need to understand the flow. We need to understand the terminologies, what we have in the uh, SAML. And then, you know, we'll see, and I'll mention these terms, you know, while showing you a demo of what SAML is all about. So basically, uh, if I have to talk about SAML, then uh, we have a SP, which is a service provider. So basically it is the entity providing the service, typically in the form of an application. Now, easy example would be, again, uh, I remember giving an example of uh, Zomato and uh, Google. So in that scenario, your Zomato is the service provider. I mean, uh, as the name suggests, so whichever application is going to be providing the service, that becomes your service provider. And whosoever would be authenticating the user, the end user who is trying to get into the application would become your identity provider. So an identity provider is the entity providing the identities, including the ability to authenticate a user. Now the identity provider, in order to authenticate a user, that identity has to have the user, right? Like it's not necessary that the user should be created in that particular ID, identity provider, but still that identity provider should have the information, okay, whether this user exists or not. That identity provider can have that user either coming from Active Directory, LDAP Directory, application users, and you know, maybe many other sources, but like, or maybe in its own, like, you know, the user created in its own environment, but the identity provider has to have that identity in order to authenticate the user. So then only it will have the ability to authenticate the user. The identity provider typically contains the user profile some additional information about the user, such as the first name, last name, job code, phone number, address, and so on. And why do we require this? Because see, 
uh, if I just have to, you know, authenticate a user based on his first name and last name. So there are many people in this, you know, uh, world having same first name, last name, and you know, many other attributes for certain people are same. So now there could be a conflict of, you know, identity because, you know, there has to be at least one unique attribute for every user, which helps us to identify that, you know, this is the right user trying to log into the system. Uh, maybe, you know, there are two with four girls or, you know, there are maybe two other people with the same name, having same age, same uh, gender, same, you know, uh, profile, same location, but at least one of their attribute has to be different, right? Like, which will actually, you know, make them unique or identify that, you know, these two individuals are different. So that's why, you know, uh, like, you know, identity provider contains a lot of user attributes, uh, which could be, you know, different uh, profile attributes. And depending on the application, some service providers may require a very simple profile, while others may require a richer set of user data. So, as I mentioned that, you know, basically what is going to happen is that this identity provider and the service provider is going to, you know, create a trust between them. These, let's treat them as two different parties or right, entities. And, you know, they need to have trust between each other. Until unless they do, these two identity entities don't trust each other, you know, there is no point of single sign on because like, you know, if identity provider doesn't trust service provider, service provider doesn't trust the uh, identity provider, then, you know, there cannot be any exchange of metadata. I mean, there cannot be any exchange of information between these two uh, entities. And if there is no exchange, then single sign on cannot be achieved. So basically we create a trust between these two entities. And now once the trust is created, so service provider says to the identity provider, okay, you give me these, these information for a user whomsoever you are going to authenticate. Identity provider, because there is a trust, trust with service provider. So identity provider also provides that information to the service provider. So it's like, you know, two way communication between these two entities and whatever information is required from the service provider on successful authentication or unsuccessful authentication, uh, the identity provider actually provides that information to the service provider. Now I've just mentioned that, you know, identity provider is the one authenticating the users. Service provider is the one you're trying to get into. And basically if in simple terms, I have to explain it's your application. Now, what is going to happen is that a service provider and an identity provider are going to speak or you know i mean they're going to communicate to each other so there has to be a request and a response you know being generated and that's what it is called as saml request it's an authentication request generated by the service provider to request an authentication so now what happens is like a user is trying to get into an application a user is you know trying to access any application and uh, uh, there would be you know it, the user would first be going to the application and you know maybe let's say the user wanted to access Zomato. The user went to the application Zomato and, you know, uh, directly hitting the link on browser on his phone, maybe opening the application. And then from Zomato, the you, Zomato will understand, okay, this user wants to leverage my services. Now, if there is, you know, an identity provider and a service provider, service provider is Zomato in this case. These two entities will, you know, have to speak to each other. Now Zomato will understand, okay, this is the user. I need to check whether this is a legitimate user or not. I cannot allow this user to leverage my services without before authenticating the user. So eventually what is going to happen is that Zomato is going to send an authentication request to Google. Okay. So that's what, like that's a SAML request. When an authentication request is being generated by the service provider, that is by your application to the identity provider, and what it is generally doing is that it's asking or it's requesting for an authentication. It's saying to the identity provider, this is the user, please authenticate this user. If you feel this, this is a legitimate user, please come and tell me, I will, you know, allow this user to enter in my uh, environment and leverage my services. So that's what your SAML request is. Then, you know, if someone is requesting, there has to be a response to it, right? So uh, once, uh, like now the request is gone to the identity provider. Now a response is being generated by the identity provider. It contains the actual assertion of the authenticated user. In addition, a SAML response may contain additional information such as profile information, group roles information, depending on what the service provider can support. 
So basically, once the SAML request goes to the identity provider, that is the one who is going to authenticate the particular user, like you know, the request to authenticate a user. Basically, now IDP is going to do its work, its role, its job. So you know, it's basically going to authenticate a user and it will generate a response. Okay. Once it like it will say, okay, this is the username, this is the password, it will try to find its own data directory. And if it is able to do so, okay. Perfect. Now the user is being authenticated. Now it will create an assertion of for the authenticated user. Assertion is basically your XML document, you know, having some information that, okay, you know, when was the user authenticated? When was the user, uh, like, you know, when the request came or, you know, when was the last login or, you know, when, for how, how much time the user is being authenticated? I mean, a session is created for the user. What all attributes are going to be sent from the identity provider to the service provider? All of this is, you know, an assertion. So it's kind of an XML document, which is being sent from your, uh, identity provider to your service provider. So in addition, a SAML response may contain an additional information such as profile information, groups, roles, as I've just mentioned. So, you know, whatever like service providers might be requiring certain details, right? It cannot just allow you to get, I mean, I'm just giving you an example of Zomato and Google, but that doesn't mean like, you know, there are business applications which requires actually the roles, you know, I might be entering or, you know, getting into an application with certain roles. Like, you know, I do not have like full privileges for that application. So I need to, the application needs to understand what type of user is, you know, trying to, whether it's a super admin user, whether it's a normal user, whether it's a business user, whether it's a super user. So, you know, there are different, different roles for an application and application needs to understand, okay, this user is authenticated, but what, what level of permissions, like what level of access or what page should I be showing to that end user? So sometimes, you know, uh, the application or the service provider asks the end user or the identity provider that please let me know what type of, you know, uh, group this user is part of, or, you know, some file information so that service provider can then, I mean, check at their end that, okay, you know, this user is coming with this group. So maybe he's part of this group, then that means like he's a super user or he's coming as a part of normal users group. Okay. I don't have to give him super, super user privileges. I'll just show him normal user speed. So, you know, there could be different, different roles assigned. So that's where service provider might require certain, you know, roles or groups or, you know, other information about the user in order to, you know, uh, in order to, uh, take a decision, what should be the landing page for the user. So now a request and a response is needed. So basically a request is from the service provider to the identity provider response is from the identity provider to the service provider. Now there are two, you know, com I mean, say concepts of, uh, SAML one is your service provider initiated that is SP initiated and the other is your IDP initiated. Now there isn't a much difference, but generally this is, you know, one of the questions like, you know, being asked in a lot of interviews that, you know, if, if you claim that, you know, you know, SAML, then basically, you know, they ask that, you know, what are the different types of flows of SAML? So these are the two different uh, flows of SAML. One is your service provider, uh, SP initiated flow, and the other is your identity provider that is IDP initiated flow. We are, we'll see that, you know, how these flow works, both of these flows, there isn't a much difference between these two flows, but yeah. So if I have to start with the service provider initiated flow, then basically it signs and describes the SAML sign in flow when initiated by the service provider. This is typically triggered when the end user tries to access a resource or sign in directly on the service provider sign, such as when the browser tries to access a protected resource on the service provider side. So if I have to, you know, explain in easy uh, language, so basically you're trying to get into the application now, like both ways, like be it a service provider or be it an identity provider flow, both ways, your end result is or your target is to get into the application, right? To get access to the application. And, you know, there has to be some authentication flow or something, something will happen. And your end result or target is that you want to get into the application, right? So now there are two ways to do it. One is that you directly hit the application. You don't go to identity provider. You directly hit the application. You directly go to the application URL and, you know, you want to get into the system, into the application. So this is called as your service provider initiated flow because it is the SP from where the SAML flow is going to be initiated. 
because you are hitting your application first that's why and your application is a service provider that's why sp initiated because you are going to the application and then you are you know that complete saml flow will start you know that complete okay that uh, like saml request will be going from sp to idp a response will be generated it, it will be checked whether the user is legitimate or not and then you know finally giving the access to the end user so this all of this will happen once you'll hit the application that is your service provider so that's why it's a sp initiated flow and identity provider initiated is it's signs in the describes the saml sign in flow initiated by the identity provider instead of the saml flow being triggered by a redirection from the service provider in this flow the identity provider initiates a saml response that is redirected to the service provider to assert the user's identity so very basic or you know simple different between simple difference between these two flows is now there won't be any redirection so you know if i talk about sp initiated flow what is going to happen the end user is going to go to the application now application will redirect to idp generating a saml request right now in this scenario if you're directly going to the identity provider so in order to get into the identity provider you have to authenticate right you anyways have to authenticate because identity provider doesn't allow any identity to get into the system without having the access to it i mean without authenticating so you will be going to identity provider in idp initiated flow you will directly hit identity provider you will authenticate yourself and then you will get into the identity provider there you will see you know a chunk of applications which are whatever they are integrated with the uh, opta or i mean yeah, whatever is your access management tool and from there you will hit the, i mean you know you will uh, hit one of the applications what you want to get into and then you will be you know redirected to the application if you are a legitimate user so it's like you know there is no redirection from sp to idp uh, in the idp initiative tool you directly get into idp you authenticate yourself and there is a saml uh, response which is being generated by idp at the time when you actually you know uh, authenticate yourself under in idp and once you do that you know that response actually goes to the application and that's how you you know you access the application or leverage the services of the application okay so next uh, we'll see some more terminologies uh, with regards to saml assertion so it's i just mentioned you know assertion in the previous slide like uh, what is an assertion in simple terminology it's a data provided by the identity provider that supplies one or more of the following statements to the service provider so basically you know a document which is suggesting okay you know this this information or you know when was the last login when the user tried to log in and you know stuff like that so it will just send certain information about the user to the service provider and that's a saml response so saml response is basically an assertion which is being sent by the identity provider to your service provider now under assertion we have you know got couple i mean three statements which generally is being sent by the identity provider to the service provider okay so basically what happens is like we have got authentication statement this is one of our assertion uh, statement or you know one of the uh, one of the things which is being sent under assertion i mean i am just talking about now three statements or three things which an identity provider sends to a service provider and this is uh, this comes under assertion because that's like a saml response which is being generated so basically authentication statements tells us that you know asserts that the user specified in the assertion actually did the authentication successfully and at what time they did so so see identity provider is going to authenticate there could be two results whether a user is authenticated or a user is not authenticated right so if a user is authenticated then an assertion is being generated right and an authentication statement would suggest that the user who was trying to get into the application it's a legitimate user authentication is successful for that user and at what time the user was authenticated like you know maybe it's authenticated at 10 15 am in the morning so we need to log that time so identity provider is going to do it because identity provider is the one actually you know uh, authenticating the user so that would be the best possible uh, uh, situation to you know tell us at what time the uh, authentication is successful 
and then you know it will send the attribute statements so i have just mentioned in the previous slide that you know service provider might require some attributes to be sent from the identity provider and now identity provider is having complete information about that user with all the attributes so whatever service provider requires you know identity provider has that information about the user so it can easily send that information to the service provider so that's like your attribute statement it will supply the attribute values pertaining to that user the name id attribute is required and specifies the username but other attributes can be manually configured as well so there has to be at least one or two attributes right like uh, uh, there has to be a mapping between an identity provider and a service provider so that's basically the name id format or you know which is basically the username of the uh, because we say that you know for an organization a username of an individual is always unique even if we have web worker couple of web workers or 10 web workers in an organization but every web worker is going to have an unique username so that's why you know there would be a unique attribute which will be sent from an identity provider to the service provider but if in case we require you know more attributes to be sent from idp to service provider we can do it we can you know manually configure it uh, then you know finally we have the authorization decision statements that declare a request to allow the assertion subject to access a specified resource has been granted or denied so you know finally it says okay I mean, assertion is being generated whether a user is authenticated successfully or not. Now, at authorization decision is like it will finally say yes or no. I mean, it it will finally write yes or no. Okay, if the user is authenticated, yes, allow that user to grant access to the application. If the user is not authenticated, it will say no, don't grant access to the application. So access is denied. So basically, these three statements are being, you know, the assertion is carrying these three statements with it. And this is, you know, this SAML response, which will be going back to their service provider. Another important terminology is your ACS. This is, a, you know, uh, one of the terminologies which is being asked in interviews a lot of time. What do you understand by ACS or an assertion consumer service URL? So we have just, you know, understood as what is assertion. Okay, an assertion is a document which will have certain information about the user uh, and you know certain like what time authentication rate, whether the access is granted in some attribute and this is being generated by your identity provider and it will finally go to the service provider. This is your assertion. Now, assertion consumer service as the name suggests. Now, this assertion has to be consumed somewhere on the service provider side, right? Like because IDP has done its job, IDP has generated the response, and now IDP is saying that this is the assertion I have created. Now it's up to the service provider what they want to do with, the, with this assertion. So there has to be an endpoint URL on the service provider side that is responsible for receiving and parsing the SAML assertion. It's going to be in the XML format. That's why it requires some parsing. And I just mentioned, right? Like, okay, attribute decision would be, or authorization statement decision would be that uh, uh, it will write here some, but that's not going to happen, right? Like, just to explain you guys, I am, you know, talking in simple terminologies, but uh, it's going to be an XML format. So it requires some parsing, it requires some decryption of data, whatever is coming from the identity provider, that, okay, you know, what does this mean? service provider has to understand that thing. So basically that is what your ACS is all about. The service provider, there has to be an endpoint URL and it, it cannot be your uh, application URL, the login URL which you use for your application. Definitely it cannot be that URL. Uh, generally, you know, this is the URL which is being generated by the service provider itself. So whosoever, you know, on the application side, they want to have a SAML integrated. Uh, so, you know, they generally have this information. From Okta's point of view, you know, we cannot, we cannot generate this information at any time. This is, you know, something to be provided by the application team. So we cannot do anything on this thing. So it's basically uh, like the endpoint URL that is responsible for receiving and parsing the SAML assertion. Keeping in mind that some service provider use a different term for ACS. In Okta SAML, it is being used as single sign-on URL. So some of the access management tool or some of the products of access management you know they they term it as the single sign on url some of them say it as acs url but they are you know one and the same thing so acs url or single sign on url um, you know whenever someone asks you this question they mean the same but the important point to understand is that uh, they, this is, you know, the service provider is actually having a URL 
which will be consuming that assertion you know which will be actually going and parsing and you know understanding what the identity provider has sent and because one if it is like the identity provider is sending some response but if the service provider is not understanding that response then what's the point of getting a response right identity provider is sending something that service provider has to understand it and that understanding of what idp has sent is known as acs url and at what point or you know at somewhere it will it will just you know parse the the saml assertion and it will understand okay this is what the uh, idp was saying or it was trying to communicate to us and according to the decision what idp has taken whether users should be granted or not what attributes and all the user is finally given as given access to the application so that's what your assertion consumer service url is next we have attribute it's a set of data for a particular user any you know profile data so that's what is your attribute it could be a first name last name username email employee id or you know location work email anything so anything any data pertaining to a user uh, and you know i mean pertaining to the profile of a user that is your attribute uh, then you know what is an audience restriction so basically a value within the saml assertion that specifies who the assertion is intended for so now basically what is going to happen is that you know <clears throat> there are going to be multiple applications within idp like you know there like we have got multiple chunk of applications being integrated by a single idp we we are not you know think of a scenario that you have got 100 applications and each application is having a connection with only single idp there are not 100 idps for 100 application there is one identity provider that is your octa which is going to be integrated with multiple application now every time octa is going to authenticate how will it know that you know that for which set of uh, application or you know for which application it is it has to create an assertion for there are multiple or hundreds of applications being integrated in octa so any request saml request coming to octa octa needs to understand right like which application is asking me a saml response right so that's why there is an audience url or an audience restriction which helps us to understand which application every uh, application has its audience url or you know an audience restriction url which helps octa or the identity provider to understand okay this is the one for which i have to you know generate a response so that's exactly your what is your audience restriction uh and also like you know sometimes the uh, audience restriction and the acs url that is a single sign on url they are saying most of the cases you will find they are not same but if in case they are it is not being provided by the identity provider then i mean by the service provider then you know we treat that okay the acs url itself is the audience restriction but 90% of the time uh it has to be provided by the service provider that is your application data uh then what is the default real estate uh it's basically the url that users will be directed to after a successful authentication through saml so that's your real estate then endpoint are the urls that are used when the service provider and identity providers communicate to each other so that's your endpoint then entity id is your a global unique name for an identity provider or a service provider so as i've just mentioned right like it's something like an audience restriction but not exactly but uh, because like entity id is something like you know uh, identity so there is a unique name you know for every identity provider and a service provider and that unique uh, like you know they i mean like for example let's say that you have got five applications of salesforce so every salesforce application will have something unique right which will differentiate it from the other four application so that's what like you know even if an octa so there cannot be just one octa tenant right like you can have multiple octa tenants right so that's why uh like you know there would be a an an and entity id that would be unique to for both service provider and your identity provider and uh, you know that unique octa identity is being generated by for each application when we talk about octa and it is referred to as the idp issuer in the octa's application set of instruction so you know for whenever you generate or you know you uh, create a connection for an application in octa it will actually you know create a unique octa entity id and that's you know basically we call it as identity provider issuer in octa as application setup instructions then identity provider is something we have already understood it's the authority that verifies the and asserts a user's identity and access to a requested resource uh, 
uh, then metadata this is important now what is a metadata uh, metadata is basically you know data over about data but like I just mentioned, you know, the concept of trust between, I mean, between the service provider and your identity provider, there has to be some trust. Now, this metadata actually allows you to, you know, maintain or, you know, create that trust between these two entities. Okay, it's a set of information supplied by identity provider to the service provider or vice versa in the XML format. So, you know, like whatever this exchange of information is going to happen, right, between an IDP and an SP, that's like somewhere it has to be you know uh like uh i mean consolidated and that 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 set of information is is known as metadata so <clears throat> what happens is basically when we are creating a connection right with your service provider or your identity provider the service provider supplied metadata will typically provide the ecs url your audience restriction name id format your certificate and if the assertion needs to be encrypted and at this time, SP supplied metadata cannot be imported into Okta. IDP supplied metadata will provide a single sign on URL entity ID X.509 certificate, which is required by the service provider to decrypt the assertion. So, you know, any like, let's suppose that there is an assertion and any assertion cannot be decrypted by any identity provider, any service provider, right? There has to be a trust like which will actually, you know, allow that assertion to be decrypted uh, i mean to pass like now suppose like i have my own identity provider and uh, i you know generate my assertion and i say i go back to the application side like just decrypt it like like now, now my application doesn't know if what uh, is the identity provider then how will it decrypt it right like uh, it's not just something that you know i can just go to google and i can just you know type in my or get my assertion and it will decrypt it so there has to be some trust there has to be some set of information exchange between these two parties which will allow you to you know do the process and this metadata you know is actually your integration steps are your integration steps so basically whenever you want to integrate an application in okta first thing you ask is like to the application help me with the acs url audience restriction name id format <clears throat> the certificate and once you get that you you know you configure this connection on okta and you know you provide them your metadata to okta then which contains you know information like single sign on url entity id uh, certificate so you know this is the set of information which is being required by the service provider in order to decrypt the assertion which octa is going to send whenever the authentication request will be generated so that's what your metadata is all about <clears throat> then name id is again an attribute within assertion that is used to specify the username so we just mentioned this thing above then a service provider is the hosted resource or a service that the user intends to access such as a box, workday, salesforce, custom application, etc. So basically, you know, your application you know, for which you want to leverage the services. And your single sign-on URL is something uh, similar to your ACS URL, which we have just mentioned above. So it's the endpoint that is dedicated to handling SAML transactions. In Okta SAML template setup screen, the single sign-on URL refers to the service provider's URL. Okay. So these are, you know, some of the terminologies what we understood. We have a service provider, we have an identity provider, SAML request, SAML response. Then what are the two types of flows that is service provider initiated flow or an IDP initiated flow. Then, you know, going deep into the terminologies like what is an assertion, what types of statements are uh, does an assertion contain. Then, you know, <clears throat> what is your ECS URL, then what's an attribute, what is your entity ID or an audience restriction, and then, you know, a relay state, and then finally your metadata concept. So we have understood all the terminologies that we should, uh, you know, know before jumping onto the SAML flow. Okay, so now, you know, finally, this diagram actually helps us to understand you know what is an idp initiated flow what is an sp initiated flow and now you know let's go one by one step by step so as an end user you are sitting on step one now you want to access the service provider on any application so as an end user you go to the browser and you hit the url so you end user access service provider from the browser you go to the link of the application now, if you're going to the link of the application, that means you're going to step two and from there your SP initiated flow is going to begin. From service provider, it will redirect the SAML request back to the browser and from the browser, browser relays the SAML request to the identity provider. Because identity provider is eventually the one who is you know, going to authenticate the user. 
So from step two, your SP initiated flow has started. Now I've mentioned that in SP initiated flow, there is always a redirection from the service provider to the identity provider. So, you know, you'll go from step two to three, that is to, you know, browser and browser will redirect you back to the identity provider. And from step four, now this is the place where your IDP initiated flow will begin. Now from step four, IDP will authenticate the user. It will identify and authenticate the user. Once the identity provider is satisfied, it will generate a SAML assertion. Now this is the place where at step five, where the assertion is being generated and it's sent back to the browser. Now browser has got nothing to do with the assertion because browser cannot you know, consume that assertion. So it will go to the service provider. Browser will, you know, browser release the SAML assertion back to the service provider. Now at service provider, it will check, it will parse, it will decrypt the assertion we have in that information. How will it decrypt? It will decrypt because service provider has a, you know, some of the information what Okta has already provided or the identity provider has already provided. That's why it's able to, I mean, decrypt the uh, information or the assertion. And it's happening because there was a metadata exchange between the service provider and the identity provider. Now, if the user is authenticated, service provider sends the security context to the browser. So, you know, it says, okay, allow this user. Now, the, from the browser, it requests resource from the service provider. And then finally, the requested resource is being granted to the user. So, this is how, you know, the flow is all about. If you see that IDP initiated flow, you don't have one, two, and three steps. Because directly from identity provider, you authenticate an assertion is generated. And it, you know, from four to nine, it happens. But if we talk about SP initiated flow, one, two, three, you know, these three steps are also there. Now, you know, there is no comparison between these two flows. You know, it is basically on the requirement. Like if someone wants to have an IDP initiated flow, then they go ahead with IDP. If there is a requirement for SP initiated flow, that depends on SP. Both are, you know, exactly the same thing. I mean, only three steps, but like that's like a millisecond. So, you know, you won't even realize that, okay, this happened. Okay, so, so it's something, you know, based on uh, the requirement of the application team. If they require their use, end users to authenticate, first hitting the URL of the application and then getting authenticated, it's fine. If they want, no, we want our end users to, you know, directly log into Okta and then authenticate, that's also completely fine. So, you know, the, uh, these are the two flows which actually helps us to, you know, achieve the single sign-on using SAML. So, yeah, that's what the SAML is all about. Uh, next, you know, I'll quickly show a demo of how do we achieve SAML. Uh, so, you know, uh, I'm do, I'm going to create a dummy connection in Okta. So you'll see that, you know, there is a dummy connection in Okta. I'll create an application. Now, I don't have any application access. So I'm going to, you know, use uh, one of the application which can be, I mean, this is kind of, you know, uh, application i mean it's also a dummy application and it can be used anywhere so i'm just going to use that and uh, now if i go to the instruction so what are the first things i need to exchange the metadata because i what basically as a part of integration i need to maintain a trust between my octa and the application so let's suppose this is my application and this is my octa so i'm going to create a trust so i'll go to the create an application integration i'll go to saml new then maybe my first sample lab then <clears throat> i've got an option to you know upload the logo then under application visibility i've got a couple of uh, options so you know uh, if i just uh, tick mark this option then i cannot do an idp initiated flow it will not be available on my dashboard so i cannot do that but if i uncheck then i can do both sam sp initiated as well as idp initiated now i go to next i need the single sign on url this is your acs url which we have just uh, you know understood so i need to get the acs so i will then download the sp initiated flow i mean sorry service providers metadata so let's download that so this is my service provider metadata and uh, i need to give the single sign on url so i need to find the single sign on url over here so this is my single sign on url you know, you can see that the endpoint contains ACS also. So this is going to be the place where, you know, I am going to, my assertion would be consumed. 
then I need to find the entity ID. This is the entity ID or the audience uh, restriction what we have just uh, studied that, you know. So this will, you know, extract from here and, you know, we'll copy paste here. Uh, next is the def default real estate. If we don't have, we can set it blank. Name ID format is your, by default, it's a username. So, you know, it's going to send you the username. And these are, you know, your attributes. So maybe if I want to send an attribute, uh, let's say, so I, I can just send my attribute. Okay. So this is, I'm using an octa expression language. Um, so, you know, we'll talk about this language, but uh, right now you can think of that identity provider is, you know, sending some attribute value to the service provider. I can send group attributes as well, but currently I don't have any, so I'll, I'll not send anything. Next is, we'll go to next and we'll just, you know, finish the configuration settings. Now, once we have finished the configuration settings, now a connection in Okta is being created. Now I will, you know, I need to assign this application to myself because I'll be the one who will be testing this application. So I'll go ahead and, you know, assign this application. And now once would I would have assigned, right? So I would see that, you know, on my end user dashboard, I would see an application with this uh, name. So you could see, right, my first family app. So, you know, uh, this is your IDP initial flow. I, I would have, you know, I have already logged into the or Okta, so I have a session with Okta, but now if I would have, you know, logged into Okta and then uh, hit this, so this is your IDP initial. I'll demonstrate how do we do that, but right now, uh, let's complete the configuration. So I have, you know, from application side, I have extracted the metadata and I have added that metadata in Okta. Now from IDP side, I need to get the metadata and add that metadata over here. So I'll just copy paste this metadata and I'll go to the application and I'll, you know, paste this metadata over here and I'll submit the exhibit. So this is my, you know, service provider flow. Like this is the URL, what this application has provided me saying that, you know, just trying to get into the application. So I will, you know, open a new incognito window. And I will try to get into the application. I'm hitting this link. Just see that this is the application URL. This is not the Okta URL. So I'm just hitting this link now. So see, I'm being redirected to Okta, right? So I'll just uh, log, try to get into the application, sign in. So now, you know, uh, there would have been an uh, assertion which is being, or a SAML response which is being generated. Uh, once this authentication will be completed by Okta and once, you know, once this is completed, then uh, I would be, you know, redirecting directly to the application. And this is, I'm, you know, trying to get it and, you know, there, there I am. So I have, you know, successfully logged into the application and if in case I would be, you know, using this particular link also. So I have a session created with my browser, you could see, and I, you know, again, I'm getting into the application. So whenever I have a session created with the browser, I mean, like with Okta, so I don't have to authenticate again. And, you know, that's why I try to go over here and check whether I have a session. I mean, in a new incognito window, but, uh, you know, I'm actually using my Gmail account, you know, to get into the system. That's why this, you know, this is causing an issue. But if in case you have normal, uh, you know, your username and account, then it won't be an issue, right? So this will, this will work smoothly. So yeah, that's it. Like, you know, uh, this is how I'm getting into the application. You could see that, you know, whatever are the attributes, which is being sent by the, you know, this is, these are the assertion details. Like, you know, you will see that uh, what is the entity ID, assertion ID, uh, hashing algorithm conditions, uh, and you know, something. So all, all of that, you know, you could see the complete assertion value over here. So this is how, you know, our, uh, and also I was sending one of the attributes, right, as email. So you could see that, you know, that email attribute value got uh, uh, sent from the identity provider to the service provider. <clears throat> so, yeah. So, yeah, that was a quick demo of, you know, how do we do a SAML integration using Okta. And uh, next, you know, we'll cover the OIDC integration. So, <clears throat> yeah, that's it for today. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining. Bye-bye.